Hey, welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I am very pleased to introduce to you uh, John Marks. He will be speaking at the World Affairs Lecture Series taking place at Westminster College. And the first one they're kicking off tonight, uh, today at 7 p.m. And welcome to the show. Thanks we are so, so happy to have you here. And uh, we're, we're going to get uh, into John's background a little bit here. But uh, you are, will be speaking on preventing violence in an adversarial world. And, and what a timely topic with everything that's going on, uh, whether with the, the election coming up and how that's created issues, uh, even you know on the on the home front, but also abroad uh, with with what's been going on recently, which, which we'll get into in a minute. But but first of all, tell me about your background and how your experiences uh, moved you to organize and establish your organization, Search for Common Ground. Mm -hmm. Well, I started as a foreign service officer, and I spent 18 months in Vietnam. And um, I had a background in foreign policy, and, I, and what I saw, I actually resigned in protest from mm -hmm. the State Department uh, during the Vietnam War. And what I saw is that the way we were solving problems, the approach that we as a country were taking in the, the American foreign policy establishment, wasn't up to what I thought needed to happen. I felt we needed to find non-adversarial, win-win ways of maximizing the gain of everybody involved. And that it didn't usually happen that way. And so I started an organization which was called Search for Common Ground to do something about it. Um, I was a bit foolhardy at the time, perhaps. Starting an organization isn't so easy. And I only had one other employee. Now we've grown to 600 employees, wow. and we have um, 30 offices. We're, we have programs in 30 countries around the world. So let's just say we've been fairly successful in taking our work out. But unfortunately, we still are, have not had enough of an impact, as recent events would show, in the way the world does work. But we're chugging away. And there, there's so much, like you said, going on around the world that, that can use the education and, and ideas that Search for Common Ground represents. What issues follow violence? There's a lot connected to this. And, and why is it so important to be aware of those problems associated with that? Well, what happens is when there's violence, nothing else works. There's no development, the health systems fall apart, the environment gets devastated. It's when there's vi serious violence in society, everything else falls apart. And um, you need to deal with the violence before you can really even deal with the other kinds of problems. So in the United States, we have a very polarized society, but thankfully we don't go the violence route. We just act, talk violently at each other, <laughs> and we act as if there were violence, but we don't mm -hmm. go the last step. And that's much to our credit as a, con as a country. But in other parts of the world, they do get into violence, and the idea of violence um, um, as a way of solving problems is unfortunately ingrained in lots of cultures. And what we try to do, and it may sound like an impossible task, is to do something about that and to change attitudes and behaviors so people don't resort to violence. And I like that you bring that up. A lot of, of one's behavior may be connected to their cultural or even religious background. That's what they grew up knowing. What uh, concepts and ideas are you developing uh, to help uh, pinpoint those issues that people are, are raised by? Right. I think what people can realize is there are better ways. And the way we do it is we try to take a societal approach. We try to reach across whole countries and uh, reach people on multiple levels. For example, we produce a lot of TV. Um, we produce what we call soap opera for social change. Explain what this is, soap opera uh, for social change. Because on the uh, surface, you're like, what is this all about? But it's actually really helpful. Tell me yeah. more. Well, drama. Um, and particularly televised drama can have a profound impact on a culture. Think in this culture about All in the Family or The Cosby Show, mm -hmm. which both probably had as much uh, impact on shifting popular attitudes towards bigotry as anything else that I can think of. I mean, there were other things going on, but in terms of popular attitudes, popular entertainment is a good way to reach people. 
where we produce now in 17 countries television series which are that kind of soap opera, drama, episodic drama, I believe is the, the official phrase for it. And um, we have a, a format we've been using about a fictional soccer team. Uh, it's called The Team. And in each country on the team, you have representatives of whatever is in, whoever's in conflict. So in Kenya, everybody's from a different tribe on the soccer team. In um, the Ivory Coast, they're Muslims and Christians. In Morocco, they're rich and poor. And the idea, the central core metaphor is that if they don't cooperate, they, can't, they won't score goals. Hmm. And if it's, it's a metaphor for a whole country. Uh, wow. if, in other words, if people in that country don't cooperate or build bridges with each other, they're not going to achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. And it can be very effective. We can reach millions of people this way. So it works, and we use it as a, a way of bringing attitudinal shift into a country. Mm -hmm. And so you've developed a TV series. What are some other concepts that have come into play? Well, we use video games. We've just been doing a video game in Rwanda, which is about, uh, most video game is about, games are about shooting down people and the like. We, we do peaceful video games. Explain this. How does this work? Well, you, you win, you get a higher score if you cooperate. Hmm. Um, and um, the, the premise is, I'm not a gamester. But um, it seems to work very well. We're just starting that in Lebanon and Indonesia. Um, we do a lot of music video. Um, we do community organizing. We work with women and young people. Um, we have youth forums in a place like Tunisia. We've organized forums of youth in, the, all the pro in most of the provinces of the country. So our, our core operating um, idea is that you need to understand the differences and act on the commonalities. Mm -hmm. And within that context, there are lots of different ways to do it. Everything from having an interview show in the morning in Park City where you're understanding differences and asking people to act on commonalities or around the world. And all these things like TV or music video or games become delivery systems to deliver this kind of information. You've explained how, I mean, there's a pretty broad range that you're looking to influence here, over anyone from children and toddlers to adults and people uh, well progressed in, mm -hmm. in their life. How important is it, is it to, to start this with children versus when they're already an, an adult? Yeah. Well, children are the key to the future. I mean, it's much easier to change attitudes and behaviors with children than it is with adults mm -hmm. uh, because they're not into it as much. And so if you can get into the educational system, unfortunately, nobody is doing that one too well. Uh, I mean, there is peace education, there are conflict resolution in the schools, peer mediation, but they haven't had enough of an impact as far as I concer I'm concerned. What, what's, there's a great need for the kind of work that I do, but not so much demand. Hmm. So uh, with recent events that have taken place over about the last week and a half, you know, in, in Egypt, Benghazi, Libya, uh, with uh, the murder of the ambassador mm -hmm. and, and, and some other uh, atrocious killings that have been going on and, and violence that has been spurred around the world due to, uh, largely in part, to a movie that surfaced about the Prophet Muhammad and uh, some offensive material. And there, what are your thoughts on that and the responses that, that have been seen around the world? Well, the first thing is I take it personally. Chris Stevens was a friend of mine. I, I was in his house in, Lib in Libya in July, and I've known him for 15 years. He used to date a woman in our organization, as a matter of fact. Um, so I personally was yeah. horrified and moved, and, you know, it, it was a bad thing. But what's happened is unfortunate and... <laughs> Um, the, obviously, people in, um, are disturbed whenever their religion gets attacked. Um, and the reaction has obviously been much too much and the like. But we, have, we live in a world where these things happen. And as much as I believe in free speech, I don't think Americans should be making videos that, you know, that denigrate another religion. And it doesn't matter which religion it is. Um, 
But this kind of approach is just so irresponsible that uh, I don't know what to say. And it, it, this is, you know, people are dying around the world, mm -hmm. and one of the prime causes is this kind of making a film uh, of this sort. And so um, it's the kind of behavior that we need to stop as a species. Now, my work doesn't usually stop that kind of thing. Um, uh, my work works pretty well with people in the middle, in the, the moderates on both sides, but it doesn't work very well with the extremists. I mean, I'm just being absolutely frank mm -hmm. about it. The extremists are going to do what they want to do, but the soci our society needs to have sanctions probably, and I don't know how, I, I mean, within the, the context of free speech, people should not be able to do this kind of stuff. So what are your thoughts on things that, uh, you know, someone like me or even our community here can do when it comes to uh, supporting causes like you're talking about in, uh, I guess, either contributing to uh, that, to the dialogue or even yeah. uh, financially? What, what are things that people can do to help a cause like this? Well, you have here the Utah um, Citizen Diplomacy mm -hmm. Council. You bring people from overseas. Um, there's education, um, you can contribute money, you can support this kind of work, and uh, you can be supportive of political candidates who, who reflect this kind of um, attitude and behavior. Um, and so, the, the, I mean, these are not things that are overwhelmingly, um, you know, in other words, if you're in Park City, you don't have a feeling always of being totally connected with everything else that's going on out there. But there are lots of things you can do as an individual. And it's, if every individual on the, on the globe were to do things of this sort, then the world would be a very different place. Mm -hmm. Well, where can people go to get more information about you and the work that you're doing? Well, we have a website. It's www dot sfcg dot org sfcg search for common ground all right yeah. well thank you so much uh, john marks here this morning you can listen to him speak at uh, the lecture to kick things off at uh, the world affairs lecture series taking place at westminster college at 7 p.m and i believe you can go on uh, the website for the utah council for citizen diplomacy uh, through westminster and, and check out the information that they have there with more and it is a free lecture it's a free of one of course so uh, be sure to arrive grab your seats and once again thank you so much it was such a pleasure to have you here and thank you mm. for the work and everything that you're doing john. you're welcome uh, stay with us we'll be right back here with more on the mountain morning show